Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin here again with another video for Bitwig Studio 3 Beta. And this time I want to talk about how to get some stuff done in the grid. The grid is kind of a, a black hole of fun and excitement, but it can be kind of hard to get some work done while you're getting sucked into all the possibilities of what you can do with it. So I think um, it's helpful to, and the key to getting work done is to be intentional and understand the difference, the different modes you might find yourself in while you're using something like uh, the grid. And it also applies to other like really massive, powerful synthesizers. Um, so there's like three basic things you're going to do. You're going to either be in discovery mode, you're going to be creating patches, or you're going to be creating music, right? So if you are in discovery mode and you're just exploring the, the synthesizer, that's important. And that's what you're going to do when you first get it. And uh, it, it's, it's something you have to do. The problem comes in is when we confuse exploring with some other things, right? So when we are exploring, um, we can set aside that time and go, hey, it's time to explore. It's time to just have some fun. It's time to just meddle around or whatever. And then you should also set aside some time for creating music. Um, if you are trying to create a patch, then it's important to think about, well, do I need to create this patch? Do I already have a thousand sounds like this? Is that really even uh, a thing? So we can easily get into going into discovery mode while creating a patch and that's okay. As long as you're honest with yourself and you're like, okay, I'm creating a patch, but it's probably not going to necessarily be something I'm going to use or it's going to be better than anything I have before. Um, but I'm just having some fun and discovering. Um, so when you're deciding, okay, it's time to make music. Here are the tips I have for you. First of all, you want to start with the notes. You want to start with creating some chords or some some a bass line or, or whatever, but start with the notes. All you need is a very simple patch. Um, if I have this, that's good enough. I can just make some chords and figure out what kind of chord progression I want. And if I need to, I can, um, you know, just get a bare sound that is close enough to the intention to get what I want. And then from there, what we do is we, we can use the grid to find the timber space we want. And then we can use automation to kind of dial in the exact movement and the exact kind of envelopes and so forth we want. So let's try doing that. Um, I have a, chord progression already ready to go here and let's listen to that okay so you know it's all right let's try to dial in that timber we want something closer to what we want yeah, it's a little bit better of what i was thinking of let's add something here right that's good the stereo, that's much closer. Let's put a bit of a filter on this guy. Might be helpful to have a little bit of a kick going just to give me an idea of what I'm dealing with. This is a cool feature that they added in three. Um, you can actually see the levels of side chain inputs. So it's easy to find the one you want. I'm just gonna side chain the, the filter here. And that's one of the cool things about Bitwig. You can easily just side chain filters or whatever you want. So let's um, look at um, I, I want to do a little automation now. So 
one of the things I want to do is this clip, I want it to slowly fade in. And let's look at this. Like, okay, so it starts out with the filter closed and then slowly opens up. Now, I only want that to happen once, right? And then I want it to continue. And the cool thing about Bitwigs automation is that that's really easy to do. If you just want whatever you automate to happen once, just hit free on the automation screen here and then go ahead and turn off looping. That way, it's only going to go through that ramp up once. And if I wanted it to do something different later, I could add that down the line here and it would do it whenever I said. But the cool thing is that's all still completely self-contained within this one clip. Super easy to do. Um, let's say for instance, I wanted to do that uh, side chaining, but I didn't want to use the, the side chain. If I turn that off, um, you can actually do convincing fake side chaining by using automation. And um, let's say I want to use that filter still I, but I'm already using the automation for that filter. Well, there's layers of automation in Bitwig. So what I can do is I'm just gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna use this alternative multiplier automation. And um, so I can just kind of put in a little bit of a bump like that. And then the, the looping and everything is separate for each one of these. So Again, I turn on free mode and now I get a loop that is only applicable to the, um, it's only applicable to th this particular subcategory of this automation. And so I'm still getting kind of, So I can make custom curves here really easily for side chaining and it's just going to work. So that's part of the tailoring you can do with the automation to get the sound you want. You can actually even tailor individual notes in, in, in a multitude of different ways, but this keeps me from having to do a lot of programming within the grid, putting a bunch of LFOs and putting a bunch of side chaining and envelopes and on and on and on. I can just do that in the automation and it's going to fit exactly what I want. So I have more creative freedom to do exactly what I want when I'm hand tailoring each note. Um, let's do a bass line. Let's throw this in here and uh, we have this poly here. So let's shape, get, let's dial in the timber for this bass. Mix, mix on, like that, tight, swarm, stereo on upper, high in there, nice, pull down that shaper, put that in there, there we go. Pull that back a bit. Um, give us a filter on that as well. Now, of course, it's really easy to get your automation source dialed in. So when I'm in this type this and so I'm, I'm trying to shape each note here and, and make it creative I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this right now but
Oops. Forgot to hit this first. So anyway, you get the idea. It's also pretty easy to do some really in-depth automation even in a polyphonic situation. So if I take um, this chord here, let's say I wanted to have each individual note with a slightly different envelope or something like that. So that's really easy to do. I can choose whatever note I want and then I can uh, choose one of these four different parameters to individually tailor. So let's do timber. And uh, so I just start clicking in here and I can separate out this guy and give him a sharp attack or whatever and then have him kind of curve in or something like that at the end. And then for this note, I'm going to go um, starting low and then coming in like that, kind of extreme. So you get the idea. I'm just going to quickly add some animation to each one of these. Not really thinking too much about how it's going to sound. It should be interesting though. Uh, and then this one. Right. And then what we do is we can hit timber, go into the grid and figure out what we want timber to do. So just like, uh, let's make it super spread and um, something and then give it a lot of fold and uh, some resonance, I guess, should be cool. And then we can just see what that um, sounds like. Actually, just get that one. Kind of cool. So, yeah, you can polyphonically sculpt each note. So that's going to be something that that's pretty much the only way you can do something like that. Right. Um, you, you're going to have to, you know, theoretically, if you had a multidimensional uh, controller, you could just go in and tweak each thing with your fingers, but otherwise you're going to have to go into the, uh, the editor and, and uh, just do it the hard way and get in there. So you can do all that stuff. So you don't, you don't have to come in here and put a bunch of envelopes in and a bunch of LFOs and all that kind of stuff. You can just be musical and not program. So largely you want to separate your programming from your musicality. There's a musicality and you're playing a guitar and you decide to do overtones or you decide to bend a note or whatever. And that's in real time and it's, it's sculpting, right? It's not engineering so that is really the way that you separate the, the you know the getting stuck into the grid as opposed to making music you want to keep things musical and using you know making notes first then finding your timbre and then sculpting with automation is really going to help you stay musical throughout the whole process so i hope that's been helpful i hope it's been interesting let me know uh, what you think about this kind of technique, uh, do you find it helpful? Let me know of other things you want to know about the grid, about Bitwig, or even other things in general. And I hope this has been enjoyable to you. Have fun with your music, and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.